And so, so I'm going to take you into my world a little bit, and I'm going to talk about energy. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how I see the world, because if you look at the world the way I see it, you will then be tapped into the causal plane where everything can be changed. Because everything that you, you see in the outpicturing of your life really is the effect of your life. And everything that created it was created by all your thoughts, beliefs, ideologies, and every judgment you've ever um, bought or sold yourself you know, to or from somebody. And so those points of view make up your reality, and that's why your life is the way it is. OK, so how many of you have ever been blocked <laughs> <laughs> in making your dream happen. Anybody? <laughs> okay, cool. So we're going to teach you how to get rid of that. All right. And I believe that if you change the frequency, like what thoughts and the things that you let come through your energy field every day, that's how you can change your reality. Now these energy, so I want you to just think, okay, so we're on a stage, there's a chair, there's your body, all right, it's made out of matter, right? And underneath the matter, it's made out of atoms and molecules and protons and neutrons and source energy that kind of permeates and holds everything together. And on this planet, there's a thing called polarity. <laughs> and that's where we live from this whole thing of light and dark, truth and falsehood. And even if you look at water, for instance, you know, you freeze it and it's a solid. Uh, in the middle is a liquid and then steam, right? So things can be transferred and changed. Negative polarity, we have electrons and neutrons. Those have a negative charge. Protons have a positive. So everything has a positive and a negative, And there's a source energy that holds it all together. So can you influence your environment? Well, there's an interesting, uh, how many of you have heard of Dr. Emoto, who talked about the hidden messages in water? Yeah, a lot of you, good. Okay, so Dr. Ramoto, for those of you who don't know, he did an interesting experiment and he took plain old tap water. And what he did was he froze it, then he took it and he put it under a microscope and he took a picture of uh, the molecules of water. And uh, when it was frozen, just plain tap water, the molecules looked something like this. So there's really no shape to it. There's no, um, you, know, uh, you know, no crystalline structure to it or anything like that. Then he took other bottles of water, and what he did was he uh, put different words on it. Like, so for instance, he did one that was love and thanks, and on this bottle of water with love and thanks, uh, he took a photo again after it was frozen, and the crystalline structure showed up. So there was a form to it. So he saw that with intention, he also prayed over the, the bottles, with intention, you can change your environment. He did another one that's really interesting, I hate you, you make me sick. <laughs> I, uh, there's a, there's a, I was watching this reality TV show one time, and this, this uh, chick kept saying, oh, that's so sick, and I'm, that's so sick, and I'm going, oh my God, what are you doing to your body? Your body is made up 70% water, right? So she's going, oh, that made me sick. I'm like, OK, <laughs> interesting projection. <laughs> then he did an energy of joy. That's joy. Joy is one of the higher frequencies that we can go. You fool. So how many, of, how many judgments do we do inside our own selves where we say, you know, we call ourselves little names in our head, and we go, what are you thinking? You're so stupid, right? So that's the energy that you're putting in your body. Gratitude. Gorgeous. Gratitude is an interesting energy. What I notice when people do gratitude statements and they're deeply appreciative and grateful for something, uh, literally a vortex of energy occurs around people. So this swirly, like, really cool space opens that allows for new stuff to come in. So gratitude's a really cool frequency to use. Dr. Bro. Uh, he did also an experiment proving that we can uh, change, you know, and influence the environment around us. He took red blood cells and uh, through intention he proved that they could slow down the rate of blood cells dying. So, you know, you can affect it. Uh, there's also another interesting experiment by the Maharishi. It's called the Maharishi Effect. And in the Maharishi Effect, 
he took uh, like 7,000 uh, meditative uh, yogi monks and he threw them in different cities and they measured what happened in those cities before and after through a variety of ways. In one city, the crime rate actually dropped 22%. In uh, other cities, they monitored that the pollution dropped. In uh, Tel Aviv, the stock market went up. So this is basically putting conscious beings in a place, pulling in source energy, radiating it out in a space to change the environment. Okay. Then when I was working on people, I noticed that some people would change really rapidly and some people not so much. And so I came across a book called Power Versus Force and it had this beautiful little scale in it. And uh, what I noticed in the scale is that it, he was basically putting in a little scale what I was seeing in my practice, why some people would change and some people wouldn't. So when I was looking at people and I was like pulling out these patterns, some people obviously had more patterns than others. And uh, if somebody had guilt and shame, they were usually the harder patterns to uh, pull out. And here's why. They're actually the lowest frequency. So the energy of shame basically means I am not enough. So if you notice that when we're going through, um, if you kind of track all your beliefs, like you think I can't make money, and you go all the way down it, or I can't have love, and you go all the way down it, basically it hits this little funny place that says I am not enough. Like you think you're not powerful enough, right? So that's, that's shame. Uh, guilt is the energy of 30. Uh, he measured uh, Hitler on the scale. Hitler's energy was like 37, okay? So he actually did feel a little guilty somewhere about what he was doing. <laughs> Uh, then there's the energy of apathy, which is where a lot of homeless people will live because they just sort of give up and they don't care so much. Uh, the energy of grief, uh, where you're just totally sad and uh, your whole energy field. Like if, if you have grief over money, that would be like, you know, you feel like a victim that you really can't, you know, how come I can't get any money? You're just sad about it. Fear, uh, maybe if I make too much money, uh, people will want to take it away from me. Like there's a little bit of a paranoia with those kind of beliefs or structures. Uh, desire. Now this, this energy of desire is not the true desire to have like a goal or a better life. This energy desire is more about like the addictive quality of, um, you know, I desire something from an egoic place of if I don't have, like I need it to build me up because I don't actually feel like I am enough. Right? So it's a different kind of desire. Anger. Now, anger is an interesting one because it, at least it's a moving energy. Now, if somebody gets mad in front of me, I'm kind of happy. You know, I don't know why? Because <laughs> at least I know they're pissed off enough to actually do something with the energy. Okay? So anger will move you. Pride. Pride is usually uh, where a lot of fundamentalism live because you're, you're prideful because of these ingrained beliefs that you have, and they might not necessarily be your own. Uh, courage is level 200, and courage is basically a door opener. He found in his research uh, that basically, like, an, if enlightened master is 1,000, right, and love is 500, one person at 500 can positively change the frequency of those at 200, lift 750,000 other people, okay? If one person at the vibration of 600 can affect 10 million people, one person at the vibration 700, enlightened, can positively impact 70 million people. So that's why I was excited about this, because basically it shows that you can change your environment. You being more you can actually really influence the world or change the world. The energy of love, which is why I call my product Lover Above, is again, the, pro the premise is basically you can change 750,000 other people by you vibrating the energy of love. And so uh, healing, healing energy happens at joy. You wanna heal something in your life? Go play. <laughs> then there's peace, 600 and above, and enlightenment. So it's a logarithmic scale, and basically I'm just showing you that all of the beliefs and structures that you have in your being emanate or vibrate at one of these levels. And if you pay attention consciously to what's going on inside you, what are you thinking, you can actually change your world.